So there's 14 games on Sunday, 14 NFL games. So the best that somebody's going to do would be to pick eight of 14 games correctly or seven of 13 games correctly. It'd be very rare if somebody went nine of 14. Nobody goes 10 of 14, 11 of 14. That gets out of hand. Uh, seven of 13, again, somebody might do eight of 13. They're never going to do nine of 13. That is a bold face lie. There are plenty of people who have bet 14 games and won 10 or more. Now, it isn't probable, but you're making it out like it's impossible. That isn't the case at all. There are regular, everyday fans who have gotten lucky and hit 14 out of 14 games. Now again, just because it's not probable doesn't mean it's impossible. Jaron is clearly lying to his audience when he says, nobody ever hits 10 out of 14 games. Oh, that's that never happens. You won't ever do it. If you bet enough weeks, you will eventually have a week where you win 10 or more games. Why? It's because people don't understand how gambling works. There is a line that is set, right? There is a spread. It's not even. It's not this team versus this team. When you're betting, you have to play the spread. So you have to look at what the odds are, and there are always one team is favored. So one team might be a minus seven, meaning whatever their score is at the end of the game, you have to minus seven from them. And that's what the score is actually for the gambling purposes. So now Jaron has told his audience, if you want to bet on the games, you have to bet on the point spread. No, Jaron, did you forget about the money line? You can bet on a big favorite straight up to win on the money line. Duh. Did you forget about the over and under? Did you forget about the player props, future bets, team totals? There's a lot of different ways to bet on a football game, Jaron parlays and teasers where you can manipulate the spread buying extra points why are you being so deceptive as to tell your audience if they want to bet they have to bet on a point spread when you know that's entirely inaccurate very dishonest jaren these are the reasons why i call you a dirty shill bag so it's set up in a way where the line is down the middle for every team so it's basically like a 50-50 chance, but you, the gambler, have to pay what's called the VIG, called the juice. It's 10%. So I've tried to explain this before because somebody else was saying sports is rigged, and it's like, well, why do you think sports is rigged? And they're like, because look at all the money that gets gambled. It's like, you don't understand gambling. No, you don't understand gambling. Or you're purposely lying because you're controlled opposition and a dirty shill bag. That's what I think is going on. So, Jaron, when you say that people think that the games are rigged, sports are rigged. Professional sports are rigged and phony. The NFL is the National Fixed League. Are you about to say that the games are not rigged, even though former players have come out and admitted it? Like Dwight Smith, Larry Johnson, and even a current player like Jalen Ramsey tweeted that the games are rigged and had the tweet banned and removed? Are you about to say those guys are liars and that all the games are legit? Is that what you're going to say, Jaron? You don't understand it or else you wouldn't make that statement because if you understood how it works, when you gamble, you put money on one side or the other. And then the lines adjust based on that, if that makes any sense. So let's say you've got a... Uh, you know, a, a Super Bowl that's the 49ers against uh, Kansas City Chiefs, okay? And to start that out, they look at it and they say, okay, well, we think the Niners are a better team, so but they are, we're going to give them a minus three. Okay, that's where the line comes out. Boom, the bets are posted or the lines are posted, and now you have people come and start betting. Well, let's say all kinds of money is going on the Niners minus three. Somebody bets 1,000, somebody bets 2,000, somebody bets 5,000. As soon as this starts getting loaded up, and it's all done algorithmically through a computer, soon as this side starts getting loaded up, they just move the line. So now it'll be minus two. No, Jaren, your example is incorrect because if the 49ers were a three-point favorite and everybody was betting on them, then they would move the line to a minus four points and then to a minus five. They wouldn't go down to minus two. So you said that backwards, Jaren. 
But being as you are a dirty, no good shill bag, you're probably saying it wrong and backwards on purpose. Well, guess what? People are still betting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Well, then they move it to minus one. As soon as they get it to a certain point, all the bets go to the other side. Now people are betting Kansas City plus one, Kansas City plus one. And all the casino's job is, is to keep both sides of the betting equation even. When both sides of the betting equation are even, guess who wins? The house. Yeah. And what happens when they don't get even money on both sides, dipshit? You think they get 50-50 even money on both sides every game, every NFL Sunday, just because they manipulate the spread? That's the biggest load of horseshit I have ever heard, and nothing but horseshit comes out of your mouth, Jiren. Even an idiot knows you can't get 50-50 money on every single game. For instance, if the Cowboys were playing the Jaguars, America loves to bet on the Cowboys, and there's a lot more people who bet with their heart on the Cowboys than who would on the Jags. So let's say Cowboys are a 10-point favorite, and the public's hammering the Cowboys. So you move it to a 14-point favorite, and the public hammers the Cowboys. There are games where the public's 80, 90% on one side. Would you like me to show you this week's numbers and show you that the public is heavy on one side? It's not always 50-50. There are websites which tell you who the majority of the public are betting on. In some cases, it's 70, 80, even 90% of the public betting on one team over the other. You can't just manipulate the point spread and get 50-50 money every single time. In fact, if you manipulate the point spread too much and then the score falls in between the numbers that they manipulated, then Vegas would have to pay out both sides. Jaren, did you forget about that? If you manipulate a spread too much, you can end up with a situation where you have to pay out both the favorite and the underdog. So the casino makes the 10%. That's all they care about. They care about the 10%. So nobody is throwing games, fixing games for this 10% gambling money. That's a quote from Jaron Campanella, ladies and gentlemen obvious shill bag and controlled opposition quote nobody's fixing games nobody nobody's throwing games nobody they wouldn't do that for 10 percent of gambling money so according to jaren no one has ever fixed a game no game has ever been fixed no player has ever taken a dive no player has ever thrown a game. Every single sports contest ever was 100% legitimate every time. Jaron Campanella, ladies and gentlemen. Now, don't get me wrong. Does the NFL want, or does the uh, NBA want game seven in the, in the championships? Yes. But anybody who says it's fixed, what happened this year? The championships ended in six games in a lackluster 15-point blowout. What's the point of that? Nothing. Sometimes in sports, they just don't have exciting endings. That's it. And that should be evidence to people that it's not choreographed. Pretty sure if they're going to choreograph the NBA Finals, number one, there would be a Game 7. You're talking about million. Same thing, with, I'm sorry, with the uh, World Series this year. World Series ended in Game 6 in like a 4-1 blowout or 4-1 or 4-0 score. So it's not even, it's not even like exciting at the end. Why would they do that? Why not go to game seven so they make an additional couple hundred million dollars in TV rights and attendance and tickets and concessions and, well, the game just ended on game six. Well, that's because they're actually playing a game, okay? It's because they're actually competing against each other. But most people never get that. So according to Jaron, sports are not rigged because if they were, they would come down to a game seven every year in the NBA Finals and the World Series. So since every single year in the NBA Finals and World Series, it doesn't come to a Game 7, then clearly it's not rigged and cannot be rigged because they don't go to a Game 7 in those two sports every single year. Of course, Jaron, great point. 
Sports are 100% legitimate because of Game 7 not happening every single year. Awesome point. So let's recap all the bull crap that Jaronism said in this video. He said that you have to bet on the point spread. He also said that the games are not fixed and not rigged. He said that nobody's rigging or fixing games, nobody's throwing games for 10% of the Vegas sportsbook money. So he's basically saying that the only thing that the Las Vegas sportsbooks care about is the 10% juice. Sounds like something the juice would say.